Hey guys, what's up? It's Josh here back with another Kansas City Chiefs related video and guess what? Yep, you guessed it. We're doing another mock draft full seven rounds and uh, there's not much to say this time. I'm just going to go ahead and jump right in. You guys want to see the mock draft. You want to see who I have to pick and uh, yeah, I understand that. So let's get started. Uh, should be hearing some draft music right around now to accompany me. Uh, so that's perfect. Um, but yeah, with this first pick, oh, did I set the speed to slow? Oh man, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta restart this real quick, guys. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm wasting your time. I don't want it to go like two miles per hour. We'll try that again. But uh, what I was gonna say was, uh, with the first pick, um, you know, unless there's like a player that's still available, that's like. Oh, I gotta take this guy. I can't pass up. I'm most likely going offensive tackle, so uh, that's not really surprising to anyone. And people who have seen my past few mock drafts, the guy usually at 31 is Liam Eikenberg. Um, I know that uh, there might be some other offensive tackles in the draft that might have higher upside than Eikenberg. But uh, Eichenberg is your typical day one NFL starter, in my opinion, that it's just the safe pick, honestly. Uh, I would not be disappointed at all if the Chiefs drafted him at 31. Their offensive tackle board might look a little bit different than mine, and that's okay. But uh, that's kind of where I'm at right now. And I know the Notre Dame coach came out a few days ago, uh, Brian Kelly, I think it is, and he said something like, Oh, I think Eichenberg is better suited at right tackle or some something like that. Even though he played left tackle for Notre Dame this past season and did a pretty good job. So, I'm not sure where that comes from. Wow, my guy Joe Tryon, the edge defender, already went in the first round. That's interesting. Uh, to the Buffalo Bills. Um, so, Eichenberg is there. Cosme's there. I think I like Eichenberg a little bit more. I'm just going to see who all is available, though, on the all board. Um ETN, uh, we're not going running back. Um, yeah, Kadarius Tony is an interesting, or not Kadarius, well, actually, Kadarius Tony is interesting. I like Tony a lot, actually. Um, I'm just not sure he really fits this team right now. We already have guys like him, and uh, I'm kind of looking for someone a little bit different, but anyone that knows me knows that I was on Tony a long, long time before the draft process even started, but uh, yeah, Zayvon Collins is one that a lot of Chiefs fans like. I think I'm just going to go ahead and take Eichenberg. He's just, he's too easy of a pick every time I do this. So that's the pick. And then the second round pick, really hoping I can go wide receiver here, depending on how the board falls. It looks like it's falling pretty well right now with Edge and uh, linebacker, so... Uh, Really hope my guy is there. Looks like there's a little bit of a run of wide receivers, but I think my guy will still be there. Let's see. Yep, Demi Brown. And look, man, he has skyrocketed up the board. He used to be ranked in the lower 70s. Um, they got him at 57 here, which is a great value pick. I did a film review on Diami Brown. Please go watch it if you haven't already. This guy would be a perfect fit for the Chiefs offense because he just he has really good speed. Um, he's about 6'2", mm, 6'3", somewhere around there. Uh, really good size, um, closer to 200 pounds. He's, uh, you know, sometimes he can be frustrating with drops. I saw a lot of uh, concentration drops on his film and the games that I did. But, man, I mean, the big plays he has just makes up for it. And he's also like a running back when he gets the ball in his hands. I mean, he is very physical, very willing blocker, someone that can replicate a lot of what Sammy Watkins did. Uh, Diami Brown is maybe my favorite receiver in the draft, and he's one of those guys um, that, like, if you were to ask me, like, who's a player that I would take in the first round that most people probably wouldn't, one of my first answers would probably be Diami Brown. I think he's just a perfect fit for this team, um, and he's kind of overtaken uh, my spot for, like, my favorite receiver in the draft, so I'm going to go ahead and take him. I think a lot of people would like that. And honestly, I'm kind of starting to feel like with this third round pick that we could go edge or we could go edge even later. Um, the thing is, is I'm starting to feel like edge is actually a lot deeper in this draft than people um, 
give the position group credit for. Like, there's a lot of guys that I'd be okay taking later, like Rashad Weaver, Dalen Hayes right there. Ellerson Smith, he's got inside-outside versatility. And uh, like I said in my last mock draft, Daniel Harms, who does um, some work for RGR Football, he uh, said on Twitter that he would... Um, he wouldn't be surprised that the Chiefs waited till at least day three to get an edge. And I, at first, I thought that was crazy. I was like, nah, they got to address edge for reasons we've already stated a thousand times. But, you know, the more that I think about it, the more I'm okay with doing it, especially with the Jerron Reed signing, excuse me, that changes a lot of things. And then um, they could still out, go out and get a veteran with the slow market, too. I mean, Melvin Ingram's still out there. Javion Clowney's still out there. Alden Smith, Houston, guys like that. Um, so I'd be okay with waiting. So with this pick, it's really, I mean, you could go defensive back here. You could really go cornerback. You could go edge still. Anyways, Elijah Griffin is there. Um, he might be one of the best players available here. Um, and as you can see, he can fit in any defensive scheme. He's an outside corner. Um, and the Chiefs do need an outside corner with Bashad Breland being a free agent. They could bring Breland back, but hey, maybe it's time to upgrade there. And man, could you imagine Elijah Griffin in this defense? I mean, we could have a pretty good shutdown secondary if Griffin came on board. So I might go with him here. And I think cornerback and really defensive back in general is more of a pressing need than people give it credit for or, you know, make it out to be. Because, <clears throat> look, Dan Sorensen, I like him. Um, I think Chiefs fans give him a little bit too much crap sometimes, but, I mean, they definitely have reason to be frustrated with him. He's not a 90% plus, you know, percentage of the snaps guy who should be playing deep coverage all the time. That's not his thing. You don't have much depth behind uh, Matthew and Thornhill. And then, like I said, Bashad Breeland's a free agent. You still kind of have a hole there. Does any does anyone here feel comfortable with Traverius Ward as our number one outside corner? Because I certainly don't. I thought... He kind of topped out as a player. I thought, I thought um, he was more, the Chiefs tried to make him a one or a two, and he's really more of a three or a four. And a lot of that could have to do with the way the Chiefs used him. And you know, some people talk about his hand injury and stuff like that. I'm not sure I still buy that because, and <sighs> forgive me because I can't attest to this because I'm not Charvarius Ward, but. You know, that hand injury happened all the way back in week one. Can we really still use that as an excuse when he's still uh, getting holding penalties and getting burnt deep in week 16? Like, seriously. I just don't know if I agree with that. But I'm rambling a little bit. I think Elijah Griffin would be in a, a fantastic pick here. Um, and he'd give you uh, a cornerback of the future to pair with Legereus and Eden play on the outside. And you could potentially move on from Breland, and that would be a cheaper option. So, yeah. I'll definitely go ahead and take Griffin here. I think that's a fantastic pick. So that really leaves our two big needs as uh, edge and linebacker at this point. Um, the fourth round could be a good round for a linebacker. I probably could have taken one earlier and looked around a little bit, but uh, it's all right. Dylan Moses is still available. Um, if he's still available by, by our next pick, I might consider that. No, no, he's gone now. It's okay. I was going to say he's got really good speed. I did watch a little bit of his film and... I, I can see why he fell off a little bit in 2020. He just didn't seem to play with that same fire that he had before the injury. I think he was just trying to get through the season, but he does have really good closing speed. Um, these linebackers are all kind of reaches here. We could wait to address that if we really wanted to. Edge, you could go that here. Dalen Hayes, Rashad Weaver. I really like Dalen Hayes because I, I think he does a lot of things that Chiefs might um ask of him you know he can come in here and be a good rookie edge setter on the other side uh, and join that rotation there and he could uh you know like i said before he's a good alex okafor kind of replacement he's got an nfl ready body really good high upside player let's go and see who all is available um marvin wilson's still there i feel like interior defensive line uh they can't really go there at this point patrick jones from pittsburgh I'm not the biggest fan, but he does have good size. Um, man, I don't know. This is an interesting pick here. I definitely could still go defensive end. I could get that out of the way now. I might go Rashad Weaver here. I think I might be... I do like Rashad Weaver a little bit, honestly. And he used to get some first round hype, I remember. And uh, look, good size too. 6'4", 265. He can play in a 4'3". Um, rotational defensive end. Uh, that's kind of what we might be looking for around here. Um, 
I'm not sure. Really, him or Dalen Hayes would probably be my pick. You could go safety here, but uh, I feel like we kind of address defensive back enough. Um, Ellerson Smith is an interesting one, too, that I talked about earlier. What about interior O-line? We can see who's available there. Uh, Trey Hill from Georgia. I like him, but they have him ranked as the 183rd player here. High in the fourth round. Maybe not the best pick here, but I do like him. Um, and he can play center or guard, too, which is nice. Yeah, honestly, I think I'm going to go Dalen Hayes here. I think he's probably the safest pick. Probably, you know, one of the uh, better upside defensive ends in this class. So I'll go ahead and take him. And he also, he's got pretty good athleticism that could make up for a little bit of our deficiencies at linebacker. So that's always nice. Um, and we got that second, fourth round pick. Here we could go linebacker. Charles Snowden is gone. And Derek Barnes is gone too. Looks like people are reaching for linebackers here. We do really need a linebacker, especially with uh, um, what's this, Damian Wilson visiting the Jaguars. He could be gone here in the next couple days. Uh, Joshua Ross from Michigan. No, kind of a reach here. We could kind of reach for a linebacker here. Not really too sure though. Developmental will linebacker. Not really what we're looking for. That's kind of going to be Willie Gay's spot. Um, we do need a Sam linebacker. Um, let's see. I know they say Justin Hilliard could be a good one, but uh, still kind of a reacher. Honestly, linebacker is probably just not the way to go here. It's probably a position that's going to come up short in this mock draft, which is okay. Um, we could go. We could double up on a position here. Um, Patrick Jones is still there, but we already took an edge with the last pick. Probably don't want to go there again. Uh, Richard LeCount, the safety from Georgia, he's good. Uh, again, we kind of address defensive back, but I mean, kind of here you're looking at like best players available and that kind of thing. So, um, how about corner? Uh, well, we did get Elijah Griffin. I was gonna say Marco Wilson though. He interests me a lot. Maybe a little bit of a reach here, but I don't know if you guys saw his pro day and his testing, but he graded out on like a. A little bit higher than a nine out of ten on the like athleticism skill or scale, excuse me. He has elite speed, elite change of direction. Uh, he's a really, really good athlete. And if you're looking for guys that could be like the Legarius Sneed of this year's draft, Marco Wilson is someone to look out for because Legarius Sneed was one of those guys that went later on for you know whatever mix of reasons, but. If you just followed his testing numbers and stuff like that, I mean, he was one of the best athletic, you know, he, he graded out, I think, as like one of the, maybe first uh, in overall athleticism among cornerbacks in that class. And uh, all he needed was the coaching, and he got it, and look at him now. I was not surprised by Legarius Needs breakout at all. In fact, I expected it. Um, but that being said... <clears throat> I'm not sure where we go here. I could go Richard LeCount from Georgia. Um, I do like Paris Ford. I do like Tyree Gillespie. Gillespie might have went already. Oh, no, Gillespie is still there. I might take him because you know what? He is a very good um, rotational safety. He could be a good rotational safety, really good speed, ran a 4-3, hits like a truck. Um, and I am biased towards Mizzou, as some people already know. Um... Man, I'm not sure where we go here. Let's see. Let's see what they got to say about Richard LeCount on here. All right. Aligned at safety for the Bulldogs defense, he is a good communicator on the back end and displays leadership from the position. He plays with good agility and balance while in coverage. He has instances for aligning and man coverage while in the slot, ultimately demonstrating the versatility to align in multiple places. He does, however, play light and is evident at the point of attack. He also projects with high upside in the kicking game as a four-phase core special teamer. Um, I mean, I feel like there's guys with a higher ceiling than that. Uh, I like Tyree Gillespie. And, you know, Gillespie is someone... Uh, Joshua Bledsoe is the other Missouri safety on here, but I like Gillespie more. I think he's more athletic. Didn't give up as many big plays. Uh, Gillespie, I think I'm going to go ahead and take him here because... Um, Oh, Anthony Schwartz is there too, but we already got a receiver. Actually, hold on. Let me look at wide receiver. Is Marquez Stevenson still available? Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like it because he's one of my guys. He is one Oh, no, he is there. Okay, we could take him later on. He's one of my guys though because he's got 
I would consider him in the later rounds because, man, he has got speed for days. Like, I think this dude could beat McCole Hardman in a race. You guys got to go watch his highlights. I did a film review on him as well. He's an absolute burner. He'll take a little bit more development at the next level, but, man, is he good. Um, but, anyways, I think I'm going to go Tyree Gillespie here because, uh, look, you know, we talk about needing a linebacker and stuff. If we can't get linebacker here, you might as, get, as well get someone that you can put, you know, that – plays uh, dime coverage like or like a dime linebacker right and uh at this point like i think the chiefs are i think they're gonna probably lean towards playing maybe two linebackers this year unless they get one in the draft um maybe almost like a 4-2-5 where you have an extra defensive back instead of linebacker that might be the way to go and gillespie like i said pretty physical and uh can hit and tackle pretty well which means he could uh kind of make up for it there so i think i'm gonna go ahead and take him um, I think I like that pick. All right. Let's see. We're in round five. What do we got? Like two more picks left, I think it is. Because we have made one, two, three, four, five. Six. No, we have three more left. My bad. Right? Yeah. We have three more picks left. Okay. So, let's look. If Ellerson Smith is still there, I might have to consider it. Nah, it doesn't look like it. Um, let's see, he is listed as an edge on here, I believe. Yep, I don't think... Oh, yeah, he went just a few picks ago. Ah, that stinks. Okay. Um, You could double up on edge here with Wyatt Hubert out of Kansas State. I know a lot of uh, Chiefs fans like him for obvious reasons. Um, Bryce Thompson is still there. Um... I don't know how to pronounce this guy's name. The wide receiver from Illinois, but he does have good upside as well. Uh, I kind of want to hold out for Marquez Stevenson, though, and I don't believe he's been taken yet. I don't know why he would. They have him ranked much lower on here. Austin Watkins as well I like. Let's see. Where's... Yeah, there he is. You could probably get him with our last pick, and I think that's what I'll do. We could look at linebacker here. Um, Nah, not really liking any of those guys. Uh, Running back... I don't know. I really like Jamar Jefferson out of Oregon State. I've taken him a couple times on here before, but just depends on if you want to get a um, running back with one of our draft picks. Uh, it just really depends. Um, man, I don't know. Where do we go here? Where do we go? guess we're just going to have to look at best players available. Bryce Thompson's still there, but like I said about cornerback already, and we already took a safety. I feel like we kind of hit that nail on the head at this point. Um, not really too many guys in the OL that I like at this point either. Um, I think the Chiefs have plenty of OL depth anyways. Um, man, I'm not sure where we go here. Honestly, I might go Jamar Jefferson out of Oregon State, the running back, because like I said before, it's just another weapon for Patrick Mahomes and, uh, really good in open space, good first down getter, uh, can catch in the flats and that kind of thing. Honestly, I think I'm going to go ahead and take him here. Um, some might be upset by that, but I do really like him a lot. He's one of my favorite running back prospects. He's just really good in open space, honestly. Just He's he's your Damian Williams replacement. And if Clyde or Daryl were to go down, then you could still feel pretty good about your running back rotation. All right, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six. You got two picks left, guys, two picks left. And you already know where I'm going with the last pick. All right, so if we go back to the all page here, now we're already on it. Um, man. <sighs> Not too much. It's slim pickings at this point. We could look at edge again, maybe double up there. Wyatt Huber out of Kansas State. You know what? I'll just make you guys happy, and I'll go ahead and take him because he is a pretty good high upside player too, a good high upside pass rusher. And if the Chiefs don't get one in free agency, then your rookie class at the position being uh, Dalen Hayes and Wyatt Hubert. I think a lot of people would be happy about that. You could have a nice uh, little rotation uh, on the other side of Frank Clark. That includes Taco Charlton, Dalen Hayes, Wyatt Hubert. You got Mike Dana, too, who can play on uh, other snaps that Clark isn't in there. And, you know, you can mix that up a little bit and have a pretty good rotation. All right, so we're going to be taking my guy, Marquez Stevenson. Some, I mean, I... I really doubt he goes undrafted, honestly. Tamari on Terry is there, too. I know a lot of people like him, but Marquez Stevenson, man, I really just fall in love with those uh, shorter, speedier guys, and that's exactly what he is. But, 
man, you guys got to go watch him. I, I mean, yeah, he has injury concerns too. I've talked about that. But he just, I mean, no one's catching him in the open field, man. Uh, I just really like him. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do it here. And I highly doubt he goes undrafted either. I think someone's going to see the potential with him and take him. Same thing with Tamari on Terry. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and take Marquez Stevenson here and double up on wide receiver. I think a lot of people would be happy with that. All right. So I'll let it finish out here and then we'll go over my picks. Really upset I couldn't go and grab a linebacker. But if you guys pick up on my 425 idea, maybe just having a line or an extra safety in there at times that just plays in coverage and can also come up in the box and you know that sort of thing i think that i'd be okay with that and there's still some serviceable linebacker free agents out there too and then you still got willie gay you still got um anthony hitchens and hey you still got my reuben foster idea that i've thrown out there too in case the chiefs want a high upside project um to possibly take in so got to keep that in mind too all right finalizing our draft and then we'll go over it here so our picks, we got Liam Eikenberg in the first. Tackle of the future. Boom. Diami Brown, my favorite receiver in the draft. You get him in the second round. Perfect. Elijah Griffin, probably the best player available in the third round. You got your outside corner to go with Legereus Sneed, Rashad Fenton, DeAndre Baker, Traverius Ward, that rotation. Dalen Hayes, high upside edge setter out of Notre Dame. And then we also got Tyree Gillespie, the safety out of Missouri, that you can put in there. And you can play a lot. Uh, you still got Dan Sorensen, too. You can keep that in mind, but uh, just uh, a good safety to have in the rotation. Armani Watts is a free agent next year. Hey, might as well go ahead and replace him now. And Tyree Gillespie, I think, has a better future than Armani Watts in this league. Clearly, Armani Watts hasn't worked out at this point. But, yeah, and then Jamar Jefferson, you get another run talented running back to add. I know some people would probably rather just pick up a UDFA running back or something like that. Um, but Jamar Jefferson, I just... I think I had to take him there. I think he was probably one of the better players available. And uh, like I said, he's a good in open space. He's a first down getter. I think he's a good Damian Williams replacement. Wyatt Hubert, edge out of Kansas State. Chief, a lot of Chiefs fans and Chiefs slash K-State fans like him. Uh, I think there's no problem with that pick there. One of the better players available once again. And then Marquez Stevenson, one of my draft crushes. Speed for days. Perfect developmental wide receiver to take at that point. So, uh, yeah, that's my draft right there. So, uh let me know what you guys think. I think I like this one a little bit better than the other one that I did because I think I got more players that I wanted. Um, so, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments if you saw any picks I made that you didn't like or that you don't agree with. But, uh, hey, that's all I got for this video. Uh, make sure you like, share, subscribe, <coughs> excuse me, so other Chiefs fans can find this. And uh, make sure to check me out on showmefootball.com and Arrowhead Addict where I do most of my work. That's all I got for today, guys. Peace.